okay uh, while it's streaming on YouTube, but that like that's not a problem. So yeah, first of all, I want to say hi to everybody who's watching us now. Welcome to Value Tokenized. It's a pleasure to have you with us. And today, the topic of our discussion is the very important topic. It also is related to tokenization of assets, and actually, that's one thing that we'll be discussing today. But blockchain for charity how does it work how blockchain can disrupt this industry this is what we're discussing today and me Xenia and Masha we're hosting this panel and we have the rockstar speakers today so it's Martin Hackman the founder of 180 and then we have Rule Wolfert the chairman of Crypto Delta and we have Herman Bisse PhD the founder of Bialix and now, please, like gentlemen, we're just very happy to welcome you today with us. And first of all, I'm going to ask you to tell a couple of words about yourself. Maybe starting from you, Martin, please tell us about your work and how did you get into the blockchain space? Okay, for the past 20 years, I worked uh, in the charity sector all over. I started when I was uh, longer then, because I started when I was 20, so 25 years um, all over the world and for different organizations from the UN and government and for-profit companies, uh, a lot of emergency relief. Um, so that's really my passion is this sector and how I came to uh, be interested and involved in blockchain is actually the functionality of the charity. It has no new innovations and it's very, very costly um, and it's still operating like it's the 80s or 90s. And now there's this gift that came, you know, to really cut out some middlemen and layers and really start saving money and being more transparent and all the things that you really want to see. That's and now, Ru, can you tell us about um, your work, please? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, well, I'm 25, 25 years, years, almost the same age as, as uh, Martijn, I guess, uh, in, in financial services technology. technology. So um, I've, I've been, been working, working for tech companies, companies large brands, brands like Visa, uh, but also small startups and scale-ups throughout the years. And five years ago, um, I started to get involved in blockchain and cryptocurrency. And since then, I've gone through the evolution uh, of actually identifying and seeing the opportunities in this space. And that's also the reason I founded Crypto Delta. Crypto Delta is the association in the Netherlands to develop the digital asset space and build the full-blown ecosystem to give trust and scale to the marketplace of crypto and digital assets, um, as we discussed today. And my passion for charity is because I've been working alongside that industry for many positions and always wondering like, why is this so ineffective? And uh, that's also why I stimulate the, the 180 work from Martijn and was highly interested in discovering and innovating how we can deliver better value for money being donated and of course uh, to the people who really need it. So that's me. Thank you. And now, Herman, can you please tell us a couple of words about yourself? Yes, uh, my, my name is Herman Vistia. I'm uh, representing a company called Biolex, a bio-Russian expert. It uh, means that uh, we have a company in uh, Minsk, Belarus, for more than 25 years already. We work together with the State University there. And uh, I can already 2014 we uh, launched the first Bitcoin ITM in Holland. In 2017 we launched the first STO, I think even in Europe. Uh, we tokenized Biolex itself. Um, we founded uh, Liquid. Uh, Liquid is a company who helps other companies to, to tokenize their assets. Yes, and uh, from that respect, I came, you know, I, I met uh, Martijn and um, he was telling me about his work in charity and um, at that time I was already looking deeply into Stellar and uh, I said, well, you know, let's design this disruptive application that we are, we are all waiting for and um, for actually the last few months we're actually designing 
this thing uh, together with 180, and so Bilex and 180 are, let's say, teaming up here to, to get that done. Okay, uh, thank you so much. And now we have a very interesting, like diverse set of expertise here. So we have Maritime who's coming from more like traditional charity sector and how we have the experts come from the blockchain side, payment side. Uh, and I think it's very interesting to see how both this world coincide and how one can benefit from the other. And I think uh, my first question will be to Maritime. Can you please tell us about um, the state of the um, charity industry right now from your experience? Because you have more than 20 years of experience working actually in fields and there in the countries that receive, that receive help from the charities. Um, yeah. What are the current problems? Can you just very quickly outline yeah. what are the problems and how um, maybe blockchain can uh, change it? Yeah. Well, basically, the, the sector is very large. People don't realize how much money they have. No one knows exactly, but estimates the charity is probably two trillion trillion dollars per year. Um, issues are basically this: that that there are thousands of NGOs and they all partner with each other, and it's a whole chain. So the money comes through from taxes or private people that do a donation, both you know, which at the end our money, either by the government or directly, it goes to a headquarters international NGO and. They have regional offers and then they have partners locally, let's say in Syria, they have local partners, everyone takes 10, 15, 20 percent. And it's not always in its administration, but the cost simply to do a task. And if you then add up really what comes in the hand of someone, that varies of course for project, but it's very little. I mean, I have been, I feel bad about it, but it's very large program myself. I know firsthand I spent hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars for a donor. If you make a calculation, maybe 20% really would, could be coming in the hand, let's say, in the beginning, whether of school fees, clothing, uh, blankets, uh, food, seeds, agriculture input. But that's the, that's the challenge. Simply, there are very many layers. And it's still like a bit like the 80s, or it's almost like a surgeon in a hospital. And yet, for the last 40 years, basically, you're doing eye surgery in the same way. And it's the same for the humanitarian sector. A very minor improvement. Um, well, and then I can tell later what I think what should be done, but uh, this is what I think is a problem, that uh, it's also very untransparent, so you give money and you don't know where it goes and how much really of the money, because it's not clear in the system where it stays. So your money might not end, even end up in Africa, but it might end up in Syria, because it's just coming on a big stacking, sometimes it's allocated. Uh, and I think a big problem of the charity sector is that a new generation of people really have not so much connection. We want to know, we want to be involved, I want to be owner, I want to be maybe even shareholder of something that I, I believe in. And that's very difficult at the moment. So I think it's going to be very interesting in the years to come because the new generation will also start voting and government will change. I see that in Ireland already. It's not, not always bad, but I mean, the, the, the focus on what helping others, we need to be very creative, otherwise. People will stop. That's it, I think. Yeah. I mean, I can go on and on, but I, I, you know, I don't want to, because I work in this sector, I don't want to be the guy that's extremely pointing to what is bad. I often didn't see a solution either to really come with a change, you know, and, and, and I now, the direct payments of people, which is a new trend in the sector, or that for the last year, which is still relatively small. Lots of research shows, why don't you just give people money? Why do you even buy something for them? Why, why, why if someone is in a disaster, you think he cannot do anything? The thing is, we need to monitor that. We all want to know what happens with it. And that's a big problem right now. The monitoring of projects is very expensive because we want it. And, it, and then still not working. So let's cut out everyone. You know, you directly wire digitally money to people, tokens, and swap it locally. That saves you a lot of people involved. Doesn't mean you can apply that to everything in the world, but I believe that, that a lot of the help, we all know that, will go either to education of children or a house or farm, what you said, farmer equipment. Um, and I think it's fascinating if you could even cut 80% out of half of the budget in the world. You talk about hundreds of billions of dollars. Um, but I think the problem is now that it is a bit slow and that people are not that innovative, it's difficult to change large organizations. Blockchain is very new, lots of skepticism about it, what can you do with it? So, 
Um, it sounds a little bit like financial services, Martin, but uh, then sort of the revolutionary fintech world started and financial services just had to, first of all, they denied blockchain and crypto and then they made a laugh of it and then they got scared by it and now they're embracing it. So, you know, one by one, I think there's something similar is going to happen in the, in the world of charity. Um, uh, hopefully, and uh, I, you know, I hope this panel will start to rattle the cage a little bit on, on that side so that people will actually see, because I think you've been very generous, you're saying 20% hands up in the hands of the people who need it. Well, from a variety of experts, I heard more like 5% or 4% to the dollar, right? And where which is all their absolutely the ridiculous. My, every organization will say, no, my budget, we, we reach 80%, but if you see the whole value chain of doing good, everyone takes a piece of the pie. So for your own, you know, your own group, you might get a few right, but the whole system is too, too heavy. And just talk about what you say about financial services. I guess there's a very large website, eliteweb.it, that's where all the eight people come together and there's all the news. There's a job section. The last week, actually, I typed for fun, there's 4,000 jobs open vacancies. I typed the word blockchain. Only one internship came on. One. So, I mean, that tells us a bit about the state of. And I know they're very advanced, like Mercy Scores and American organizations. Oh, they, they do accept, accept, they do accept Ethereum, Ethereum and Bitcoin and, and, you know, a lot of the large foundations. They, they do take, take the money, money right? But, but they, they don't, don't use the blockchain to optimize their services. services. So, so it's, it's interesting that you start, start to see that they take donations in cryptocurrencies, but they're not ready to actually be fully transparent, show where these cryptos are ending up, how they ship through the whole value chain and how they end up with either, you know, people who need financial inclusion or are in direct need due to a disaster or whatever, that's not happening. And that's really obviously where a part of, an important part of the value of blockchain lays, openness and transparency on what's, what's happening. And why do charity like larger organizations do not want to make it transparent yet? Or do they not have the tools or they just don't want to do that? I think that is correctly. I, I think of, I have super colleagues. I mean, there's a lot of people that in the charity sector want to do good. It's just, it's like a real being in this very difficult, let's say, climate issues in the environmental problem. How do you change it? What can you do? It's not very small. If you work in an organization, you need management on your side. And management is very uh, risk averse. They want to. You know, safeguard their reputation. Uh, you know the scandals that sometimes appear in the news. So, um, uh, so, so let's just take it easy. Don't be too innovative because it might go wrong. So I rather, I rather have a story of like being positive and say, hey, let's just set the benchmark. Let's let's pick up a game or a fight or an set an example of how to do it. I mean, with one eighty dot works, we hope to be to become very large myself, but also to be inspirational. To really say, hey, this is what you can do with minor investments, you can actually cut the costs. And I think the public will actually push for this in a couple of years. So it's hap it will happen, but we are all in a in, 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 in yeah, world. They, yeah. they, but they, I, they, I, they just don't know. They just don't know. Yeah. I'm quite sure that, that, that the problem is not that they don't want to, the problem is that they don't know how. I mean, there is, especially also in blockchain, there is so much cowboy stories and uh, it's like now the, the, the it's like the, 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 the solution for almost all problems but if you're going to look in the real world there are not that many examples uh, it's still developed if you look at the networks like the Silicon Stella Ripple blockchain uh, I mean Bitcoin even I mean there's so many like highly skilled developers now working on it and if we're getting there from a technical point of view we, we can start the problem is that then we have to explain it to people and the problem is that people don't understand or have a lot of difficulties with understanding programmable money because that's what we're talking about if we can program it it means that we can tell where we are going to send this money to we can, we can program in who can touch the money, who can spend the money. I mean, that means that all the checks and balances are, be, are being put on the blockchain itself. That is not just a, an innovation, that's a revolution. 
that is a, a an unbelievable revolution. I mean, if you... But if you, uh, Herman, Herman, it is and it isn't. Because all money, electronic money, has been programmed for decades. Yeah, and it's been assigned, when you get a mortgage, you can only spend it on your mortgage. When you have a credit card, you have uh, MCC codes underlying, where you can set the age, or how much money you spend in a restaurant, or you know you can't gamble with the money, or whatever. So that is actually already placed. I think the big challenge here that people struggle with is the transparency of it. What? Actually having to be accountable. And we were unknowingly already accountable because Big Brother is watching us, but Big Brother just never tapped on our shoulder being our neighbor. And guess what? With blockchain, our neighbor can tap on our shoulder and say, hey man, what did you do with my 10 eaters that I donated? Uh, I saw on the blockchain that it's still stuck here uh, with goods there. Why? And, and then, then it becomes, becomes difficult. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think it's much more simple. I think, I think at the end of the day, all those, those checks and balances are needed. Yeah? And, that's, and let's say that, that the program needs or the money needs uh, was already pro programmable. But it was not programmable in such a way that you could leave it alone. Just program it once and nobody has to look at it because the blockchain itself would take care of it. In the traditional way, there's a lot of people involved making sure that the money goes where it should go. And, you know, the, the simple fact is that uh, we can do 400,000 transactions on, on uh, Stellar for the price of one dollar cent. I mean, there is no bank in the whole world who can do a transaction for that amount of money. That means that, that the, the, the scale and the, the costs involved are, are, are like unbelievably different than, than the traditional system. So it, it has, there is not one advantage, only that, that uh, it exists, but there is not one advantage of the current system that, that, that is in favor of, let's say, new, the new generation. Okay, but there's, I think I'd, I'd like to make a distinction, Herman, and maybe you can tap into that, Martijn, but I think in, in the whole cause there's a variety of different reasons why we donate. Eh? One is to elevate people out of poverty that are in a poor situation, and there is situations where there's a critical uh, incident, a storm, earthquake, war, and where people need help, right? And then there's two sorts of uh, things. We donate, and then a whole shit stream of services and goods start to flow till you know they get into an airplane and they land where they're supposed to be right so that is one side that needs monitoring and then the other side is you know if you would drop the money let's say for where i am right now in amsterdam straight into the pocket of the people are flooding away in Syria because the Turks are entering the country and the Syrian army is joining in there's 130,000 people if, if I, would I would be able, able to give them, them let's say, $50 to cross, to cross the border of the Black Sea and, and, and get somewhere, right? That, that would be extremely valuable, I think, right now for a number of people. people. So, so, in, in order, order to, to donate, donate the money, money I, I think, first of all, we have seen from the past that's that's traditional legacy, there's the rip-off business, and I'm being very judgmental here, obviously, to provocate, but uh, Western, Western Union, Union, all these guys, they have been milking it, yeah, for ages. Now, blockchain came in place, so uh, guess what? I saw some research. You can be 131 times cheaper than a normal remittance payment using blockchain. Now, I don't know what 131 times is, but if I've seen examples that with traditional systems, you send 100 euro and only 40 euro arrives at the person, right? That means 60 euros get lost on fees and fines and whatever costs uh, throughout the system, which is absolutely ridiculous. Me being a visa person, I know that if you use a visa card for person to person, right? So the world you can use major improvement. Now, with block, very transfer. But anybody can open an account where 90% of the people in the third world or more are
having some uh, minor uh, technical issues. Just one moment, we're having some minor technical issues. We're going to continue in a moment. Was it my fiery energy, energy that, that was disturbed here? <laughs> Yeah, I think it was exactly it. Now, I think we're back to normal. Yeah, I think there was a problem with the cam. And yeah, I just like picking up on the point that rule started. Um, it's very interesting question and starting from the these questions one by one. Uh, if we talk about the traditional payment system of getting the money to where it's needed. Right now, like there is a major cost that we stay with the intermediaries. And but getting the cash there is also um, not an option. No. no I, think, I, think I think that's, 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 that's the, the basic thing, thing that, that you want to solve. solve. And, and that's, that's, that's why, why um, at least I'm such a fan, fan of, of, uh, of uh, Stellar, Stellar, for example, because it's not only that, that they, they create technology, technology, but they're, they're also very active, active especially in the third world, but let's not call it third world, but let's just say in the uh, countries, countries where, where there are not, not that, that many people, people who have a bank account or have a wallet for that matter. Uh, but they are promoting this infrastructure to, uh, to get payments via tokens. If you look at that technology, it is, it's, it's just a, it's so beautiful because they say we don't need a an, an physical exchange to do that on chain. And we use anchors where people say, okay, I will, I will, I'll get a 180 token as a salary every day. And I go to a uh, local shop or a local uh, transfer uh, agent or whatever, and an exchange agent, and they, and they, they will just get their local currency, dollars, whatever. Uh, they, they, or they, they can, can, for example, example buy blankets, blankets foods, whatever, whatever that, 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 that there is, is. And, and we, we can, can monitor, monitor that. that. And, and we, we can, can pay salaries by the hour. hour. I mean, I mean it's, it's so, so difficult. difficult. Try to, to pay 100,000 people a salary every, every day. day. I, I mean, mean, you would go mad if you, if you, if you think about it, you know, that's just impossible. And, and we, we are, are going, going to make, make this possible, possible. And, and we are, are going, going to make, make as rules are transparent, so we know that it happened. We can we just see that it's happening. We are going to make sure that nobody can steal from it. I mean, there's, there's no, no money leaking away. No, no way. way. Not uh, not from that system. And that I think. Let me add on that one. That in, in, up till now, now right? you, you never get a donation directly to a person. So. A, a salary. If, if a worker in a refugee camp is hired to collect garbage, yeah, you don't think that the local staff will pay. It means before the money is a local staff, that, that charity, that's, that's a long road, you know, and it's an expensive road. So let's say now you have nurses in a hospital or whatever, why not pay them the Red Cross or any NGO? Pay them directly. You monitor the center in the hospital or not. So no, there's no distortion, you know, extortion. Is that the word? Uh, that people take the money away. Because simply, we only need to verify and if there's an effort. I personally believe a lot that we should be in giving countries much more creative and creating jobs. And I mean, it's not rocket science. And anyone deep down knows that. You know, I'm sick and tired of talking about Africa. That's all sad. So a lot of things go wrong, but a lot of things go super well there. But one of the things is jobs. So why not make a donation uh, and transfer it in, in micro jobs? One eighty dot works has uh, millions of people and charities in general that we are part of the network, you know, and, um, and that's not so difficult. But people, for example, can always collect data. In my in my sector, we often blind a bit because we need to know what's going on there. What, what, how is how, how is the drought? What is what is the situation? Um, especially, of course, like what Google was mentioning right now, you know, the the, the challenges in, in, uh, in northern uh, Syria. Um, so data people can collect, they have a phone already. Either we provide it or they have it, they buy it, they, they, this could be part of the job. So the phone, the smartphone becomes the way we can communicate. We can also hear when people are being uh, uh, threatened or people take their money. 
So you can create complete new models of interaction of spending age money, make it salary. And I think personally, a lot of people ask me always, even now, like, well, well, how do you know this? If people spend that fifty dollars, well, you know, or the hundred dollars, or um, well, research really clearly shows, it is, especially women, mothers, if you give them the money, you can be pretty, pretty damn sure that the money will actually be spent on something nice and good for the family. So. I believe also in good, you know, so there's a certain amount of better to accept, you know, that it's, that you don't know every 100%, but, but we can come much, much closer to what we know nowadays for a fraction of the cost. And uh, for example, the whole uh, network is so much busy with the world, with the environment. So planting trees. Uh, uh, Ethiopia last month, if you like, planted 350 million trees. But you need programs behind that to monitor that, to, to safeguard that no one cut the trees, keep the tree, the goats, whatever. But it means a salary of maybe 10 euro per, per month, you know, or 20 because it's an hour work per day. That's what we can do. This type of thing, we could employ hundreds of thousands of families just for a part time work, for example. Well, that's exciting. It's cool. Yeah, it's very exciting. And actually, you also, Martin, you mentioned a very important point, which is transparency. Just like as payments is one issue of getting the money there and making sure that it gets there. And I would like to ask Herman, what's your outtake on this? How blockchain can help ensure that the money not only gets there in full amount, but that it also like it's tracked, that it's used for its original purpose? Oh. I think uh, there's something with the sound now. Just one second. Um, yeah, I think there's Martin. And can you pick up on this question while we're setting the problem with this? Yeah, maybe, maybe maybe I, I could, could uh, step, step in for her and the concern is on mute. I see. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, well, well, transparency, transparency is important for tracking the money, where it goes, goes and, and, and what's happening. happening. So, so that's, that's one side of the equation. equation. But what, what 3 billion, billion people in this world don't have is access to the financial system. system. So they, they basically can't get a bank account. account. And, and therefore, therefore everything, everything they do is more expensive and they can't move on in life, right? right? No, no bank account, account you can't save money, you can't, you can't pay a passport, identity card, therefore you can never be a civilian of a city or, or a country, and, and you, basically you basically run into all simple barriers. barriers. Now, now, a blockchain, what, what it does, it registers all transactions on your account. account. That, that is building up financial history. history. What, what does a bank say? Once, Once you want to open, open an account, account. Well, oh, we, we don't, don't know you, you, you don't, don't have, have a financial history, uh, uh, by, by the way, do you have money? money? Now, these, these people, people now can store money in the blockchain, in the form of assets or crypto or tokens. They, they can build, build up a history without, without having to go to a bank. bank. And this, this is an entry point of getting into the financial system. And guess what? If you enter the financial system, the cost of servicing in society goes down. Generally, Generally, poor people, people pay in, in an absolute, absolute amount more for their bank accounts, account, telephone, all, all this sort of basic needs that we have identified in the world than rich, rich people, because, because we are lifetime valuable customers, customers. therefore we, we get discount, and, and they don't. don't. So, so this, this is, is all sort of barriers, and the whole transparency set of donating money to the people is not to get them help, which obviously is very important, but the, the positive side effect of building up this account numbers with financial history and transactions is actually giving them access into the financial system. Now, I don't know how banking is going to look like and whether it will be existing banks or new fintechs, but one way or another, this is an entry point into that new financial reality. And that will help them move forward. Yeah. So I stepped in for you, Herman, so go ahead. No, everything is fine. Can I, okay, can I, can I, I want just to, to add a few words. If, if I may, uh, and I think Will is, is right in a sense, uh, but again, um, I think, yes, a blockchain will make sure that more people will can, can how to say, participate in this global economy. I mean, uh, we need to do some stuff there, and, and we see that the big tech giants are working hard on it by... Uh, uh, launching new satellites, making sure that Africa will get the internet because that is a prerequisite if you want to do this. They need to have internet access at the end of the day. Uh, we see 
in Africa a payment system like M-Pesa, for example, which is like really, really used everywhere already. And I think that a system like Stellar is just plugging into that perfectly. And as you said, the moment that we give people a wallet and we give people uh, assets, digital assets, which, which they, can, they can trade, they can use, and if we, like like uh, Martin says, we're not giving charity, we give jobs. Let them work and let, let us be the, the, the employers and they the employees in the beginning. I mean, we should use our strength and, they sh and, and we should let them uh, uh, build their countries. And the good thing is if we do it like that, we are bypassing their, uh, their own governments, we are bypassing corruption. Um, and I think that is the, let's say, collateral advantages that we are going to get is that uh, and, you know, we, we don't need this big KYC. We don't have to, how to say, do a lot of things that you normally do in, to, to, to go inside the current financial system. Um, we can all bypass that. And I think that is the big, the big promise. And, you know, to be honest, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I fell in love with, with Seller just because of that, because that. That philosophy is so embedded in the technology itself, is so embedded in the Shell Foundation, how they do it, how they are going to move, how, how they are moving forward at, the, at this very moment. I think it's, um, it's really compelling to, 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 to build stuff on this one, and especially with Martijn's organization to, you know, to to do it, just do it. I mean, the technology is there. There are now people who say you can do it. It's just a matter of doing it. And set an example, and then a lot of things will happen. I mean, well, it's, 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 we have to be a little bit patient, Herman, because uh, throughout my career, I've launched several new payment schemes and, and missions. And generally, after a sort of uh, proof concept, and when you really launch it into a market. It, it takes, takes about seven, seven to nine years, years to get some decent scale, right? So we're here, here at the forefront of what's happening. happening. Uh, and, and in, in order, order to, to get, get scale, this, this goes for everything. You need to build trust. trust. And trust, trust in the system, system uh, is, is, is important because it needs people, not everybody is as knowledgeable about this industry. And they want some reinsurance that if they lose their bank account, they can get their bank account back or the money back or at least access to it. Yeah, And that is something that requires some governance process, right? Also, people want to be clear that if they make a payment mistake to somebody else that you know, you know, to the wrong person, person that they, they can, can get, get the money, money back. back. Especially if you, if you only have $10 and you, you transfer $2 to the, the wrong person by accident, you, you need to be clear that there's ways to recuperate money, money right? right? Um, the, the third, third thing, thing is, you, you know, know, it's really, really about, or the second big thing is ease of use. Now, having done quite some work in the remittance industry, also in the Middle East and Africa, it's important. Not everybody can read and write. Yeah, so, so the, the design, design of apps, apps with, with people, people needs, needs to be completely based on images that align with the, the local culture. culture. Yeah, yeah. Um, in, in, in some, some countries, countries, and Greek, Greek people, people don't get offended uh, when, when I make, make this gesture here on, 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 on the YouTube, YouTube channel. channel. But, but in, in the Netherlands, Netherlands this, this is okay. okay. But in, in Greece, that means something completely different, right? So the same goes for talking about money and acceptance. Uh, we, we, we want, want to build, build a system in, in, in Turkey, Turkey together, together with Visa and Vodafone where people had to, could shake the phone like a handshake because in Turkey it's really important when you commit to a deal, you make the handshake, right? So these sort of cultural affinity needs to be integrated so it's easy, convenient and trusted for the people to use. But the trust also needs to be obviously in governments around that and whether that's traditional central banks and uh, uh, with innovative, innovative policies, policies, let's put it like that, that. or it's, it's more of a self-regulation through foundations like Stella Foundation, Foundation and others, that it needs to be sorted. Otherwise, no scale will actually happen because scale will be disrupted by, by wrongdoings, misunderstandings, fraud, or, or other things that can happen. 
I, I, you know, to be honest, I don't believe that that the, the existing financial system will ever embrace this one, because this is a direct threat to what they are doing. It's like a direct threat. I mean, and they will not be able to compete with the, with a system like Stellar. Stellar is there now for like four or five years already, and they are they are creating this scale. If you talk about nine years, we already did five five of those nine years already. So. Probably, I, you know, let's say we have four years more. We need, we need a few, you know, we, we need a year, year and a half to to build a, a system that that can scale. Like, you know, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people. Um, but then, I mean, then I think there is nothing that 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 will prevent you of of, of you know scaling it up to a million, to five million, to a hundred million, that's to a billion even. It doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, but I'm gonna I'm gonna make a silly joke here, uh, Herman, because uh, the EMV standard in plastic cards was invented in 1988, and it really got deployed in the early 2000s. So between the technology and a scalable platform, there can be a, a long waiting list. And um, I'm I'm pretty much convinced that we're not four or five years away from a massive use of Stellar. Um, I, I know working sometimes with the people at Ripple how difficult it is to actually sign up a, new, a lot of clients, yeah, uh, traditional financial institutions or fintech players in that field, and then actually get them to migrate the volumes into that industry, and then you know there's a long, long way to go. Uh, but I, I, I personally think this shouldn't just be about transferring money because. That's, that's not, not where you, you lose 85, 90 percent of the, the, the value, value donated, donated right? I, I, I think that's more on the bureaucracy side, and, and uh, uh, you, you know what, what Martin, Martin was describing the whole value, value chain. chain. So, so I, I, I would be quite keen. keen. I, I think, think we can, can find ways to send people money, money. but the, the real, real question is how do we give them, besides the money, the means to actually be an entrepreneur? Yeah, uh, give, uh, give them, them knowledge, give, give them access to uh, uh, education, uh, give, give them access to, I don't know, laptops, uh, whatever is required, or maybe a, an axe just to cut a tree down that was just planted in Ethiopia, right? They buy it, they buy it, too. I mean, the only thing they need, give them a job. If you give, if you give a person a job, he will buy what he needs. We don't know what they need. I mean... We can, we can, you know, we can fantasize on what they need. That's why they, we, we, we send them blankets because probably they will have, you know, it will be chilly at night. So send them blankets. I agree. I don't think that's the real. That, that's also my, my, for example, that's my job. You know, that's what I'm saying to uh, find beneficiaries, identify what they can do. Um, that's all. Not everything needs to change or something, but but a lot of people can do a lot themselves and. Uh, and uh, uh, guys like me, you cost money, and if, you don't, if you're not needed, that's the best. So, I'm also a boots on the ground. So I'm not, I, I'm not such a guy that, that believes that everything needs to be in a, in a handing a shape, and standing in a circle on the earth or something. I think a lot of challenges are there. A lot of bad things happen, I see, all the time. So, a lot of things are simply not fair. Um, uh, and it won't be a perfect world, and I think that's... I believe I work a lot, and I believe it also is one eighty. You know, perfect is the enemy of good. Let's find something that's even an improvement and build on that one. But with in mind, as, as, as uh, Herman is saying, uh, to scale it up, because um, I rather I rather have millions of payments, you know, uh, 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 donations. Because we're talking a lot now about the beneficiary you know, of the people that receive. But I think it's also good to focus really on on, on the people that give. Uh, the disconnection. I mean, it's, it could be confrontational, but I don't see any problem. If you donate your money to our system, you want to know who you can speak to the person. But that also raises very many challenges. Like, hey, what, what you going to do? That person speaks to you. I think a lot of people that is very much confrontational. Like, you know, so you, as long as you know it, you can speak, you can hear, you can have voice messages because you know that person has literally your money, um, and or your money is like. They all have that money and you want to distribute it a bit more evenly. But, um, and I think that, that could be fascinating. That you have really like personal. Uh, imagine a lot of people go on holidays and meet people in other countries and they say, I want to support the son of a taxi driver that, that took us around for two weeks. 
I'll start your own micro project. No problem with that. You can, because KYC stuff is important. You know, I work a lot in countries where there's lots of terrorism and stuff. So I deal with that a lot. I think it is even on a small scale very important to to do your homework very well. Uh, uh, where is the even 50 euros going? As much as you can. It's, but um, um, challenge is there, but it's possible to up to a high uh, level of certainty. Certainty, but but I believe people uh, direct. You know to. Because let's say you get money, there's a sponsorship. People sponsor, uh, not really, but sponsor a child. It's not a tough thing to take uh, forty dollars per month, forty euros, or average. So people for eight years and uh, even longer, I think. So um, why not build up a relationship with, with another family in the world? The thing is, it should be very cheap. And you could see here a system in front of you where you could have something like um, Airbnb. Airbnb that is basically not owning a house or or 180 doesn't own maybe all the projects, some we will do, but it is just providing a service for people. And then I think it will be very interesting how that evolves, let people be creative, you know, both sides. I wouldn't be surprised if local people in um, South Sudan and Sudan, South Sudan will organize themselves and start their own projects and start marketing their own projects to the world, not via the UN anymore. Or, or, or uh, why not? Why not? You have a voice, you can make materials, you can, and people can crowdfund themselves, you know. But then how do you get the money there again? I see lots of good initi initiatives all over the world where people are very creative. I think a lot of techies do that, come up with very good technical solutions, a lot of marketeers do that. Well, I'm more than the humanitarian development aid experts, right? I want to do it for my field, but I see a lot of these things not actually working because the sector is not ready for it. And then I think really you have the same experience with something, you know, that where 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 the receiver and your charity would just maybe be enthusiastic, but it never never lifts up, takes off. Um, so I believe you should send the whole examples again, the benchmark, and then let, let everyone learn of that. So I'm looking for new models to involve, you know, younger crowds. Why not so to have a micro donations every Friday when you have a drink in the bar or something and then at 10 o'clock it's a national tradition we all donate one you know a bunch of 180 tokens or something and, and immediately get a result of that and imagine if you do you know a member and you could your child or whatever raises some money a couple of euros two three euros from, from working in the garden and they want to do good to the family that you sponsor maybe to 180 or connected with and six seconds later that your, your fee arrives and uh, the family goes to one exchange agent 20, 30 minutes later, whatever, if it's nearby, uh, using maybe M Pesa and ha have the cash. And then buy oh, never, it. never M Pesa, never M Pesa. Uh, uh, okay. It's way too expensive. It's built on the wrong mechanisms of telco roaming. Uh, it's basically yeah, cash off like that. That that is way better solutions. Anyway, that's the thing. We're going to talk. No, but exactly. And you see, I, I, I want to stop my shop. And uh, I'm not pretending uh, to be uh, <laughs> with the brains of a permanent and the looks of rule. We can actually stop it. Like, yeah. There is a question, like rather a comment from the audience. It gets us back to what we were discussing previously. It's a question from Scott Morris. And it says... There is a gap in the knowledge around the management because the management models we've inherited aren't as compatible with blockchain as are those of flat organizations that share power. Um, maybe you could have something like Herman, maybe you have something to say, comment on that. I think, I think that's, that's a very, very valid, valid, uh, uh, valid, valid question, question actually. actually. I mean, I mean if, if you, you have, have such, such a flat, flat organization, organization, how are you going to manage? hundreds of thousands of people who you actually pay salary. I mean, imagine that. You are becoming, we are going to create the Ubers of charity, basically. I mean, it is like, uh, like, like, um, uh, Martijn also indicated, yes, you can do, with 180, you can do projects, but the platform itself allows mini projects. Like you can say, okay, I will, I will just uh, make a project for uh, 15 families in uh, Malawi who are going to plant um, uh, fruit trees, and we have to support them for three years, and we do that with, uh, with, uh, with a small group of people. Uh, we are in direct contact with them, and uh, we just want our money to go there uh, without friction, uh, we, we have some people who just donate like a euro a week, and is that still possible? Um, 
And that means that it's not just one organization which should be just a lot. We are going to create a lot of micro-organizations. They are all very flat. And probably that is the, 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 the character of blockchain, that it is like distributed, it's peer-to-peer. -peer. It's not centralized anymore. I mean, and that is so compelling. And yes, yes, we need to develop new management strategies for that. Uh, this, this, is, this, is this is very interesting. interesting. Yeah, so, so I read a few books about uh, African, African tribal leadership, leadership right? right? So when, when we, we go, go back, back centuries, then uh, proper, proper leadership, leadership also in our Western world was on a tribal level in cells of 50 to 100, 200 people. Right? right? And, and that's, that's uh, people, people knew each other, there were social controls. Uh, of, course, of course, they didn't, didn't have, have the technology, technology that we have today. today. So, so actually, actually, that was seen as the optimal situation where people or organizations should organize themselves. With. That's why you still today, also in the Western world, see teams of 20 people and business units of 100 people. And beyond that, it becomes actually sort of unmanageable. Right? Uh, maybe unmanageable is overstating, but it, it becomes complicated. And that's why with large organizations, you see big overheads covering, because they always say, and everybody knows to deal with cartoons where the lion and this and that, and they all add up uh, to the one uh, sort of uh, guy working, and there's seven people watching, right? So. I think if we look back to the original tribal leadership lessons on consensus, yeah, sitting in the gotla under the tree with the 200 people coming to conclusions of what is right and what is wrong, yeah, it might take a little bit longer, but at least the whole society carries the decision and agrees with it, right? Now, that is actually the principle of blockchain. So, technically, we could actually do what was done for centuries in a very well way that fits with the culture and the, the feeling in, in a number of those countries out there that are in need. And we could potentially actually, with the technology, accelerate the adoption of a number of these decentralized principles and, and the governance around it. So I would see the new tech with, let's say, well, I don't want to call it old-fashioned, traditional management styles and ways, ways of, of living, living together, together is actually, actually bringing this together. together. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty hopeful that uh, what, what, what what Scott Morris was asking, by the way, he's probably on his way to the UN now to have a discussion about this in Washington, um, uh, to actually talk about this subject and see how we can get rid of the centralized layer, 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 layer right? Uh, well, well it's maybe not fully, not fully like a tilt and centralized. For example, uh, we are working on a model to have a couple hundred thousand shareholders because it irritates me a lot. That I have people when I work for, I cannot mention the name, a large international organization, American, someone donated uh, tens of millions of dollars, but he could never have a single vote right for just your thanks, you know, and it's nice, of course, but I think. Why, why not onboard a lot of people for 50 or 100 euros per person, your SEO, and, and get a lot of people? Um, that's what I like about your SEO. We have already embedded it in the legal structure 180 in the Netherlands. If you can have un, almost unlimited number, very low cost to onboard people, not to actually raise a lot of funding with, because maybe but it's actually to give 100,000 people or more to vote and say, what is the plan for 2020? How much environmental projects are we targeting and are we going to do? Because I think that creates connection. But also, why could uh, people receiving the money not be given a voter rights? You know, it's not only the, the, the money people, but actually people doing the job. Because, hey, we talk about jobs and, and colleagues working in our company, in our platform, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I think that is really nice. So if people sit on a birthday and whatever, say, hey, I'm actually involved in this uh, COTV, this big disaster, and actually my company is already active there to solve it. And I think that will spread the word to people and make it very, have a group set that fits perfectly to have like smaller groups in cities and families maybe adopting this and, and buying some shares, you know. And then um, um, ideally they get some money back, but I think it should be secondary. It's not about that in this case, you know, but um, I like this idea. You, you can also <laughs> give emotional interest rates, uh, uh, Martijn, not just financial. 
satisfaction in a bit of you know, adventure. And, uh, and I think in that way, I'm not in this whole talk, I don't hear any big involvement of large donors, for example. Because governments could easily use this system, you know, to channel money for no problem. But it, it's not needed. I believe that it's the power of the public, not just you and me and everyone. Um, we have actually the cash, you know, and, and it's everyone there, and other people have time, and they have a need, and well, you all bring it a bit together, and uh, on a down to earth, boots on the ground way, um, uh, you get actually a uh, lot. When there's a big disaster happening, and I was in, and it was in 2004, what was it in Sri Lanka? I was in Sri Lanka when a tsunami hit there, and then uh, an organization I worked for, we raised $150 million in, I think, 12 hours or something. Had to shop so much money, the public would give and want to do. Um, so I imagine that would be much more now. There's a more trust being built and restored and recreated. A lot of people, a lot of my friends, they never donate anything. So, yeah. so, so I think if we could activate those people to say, hey, so, but it's also something maybe self focused, you know, we all need oxygen, we need a, we need a planet, actually, it's, it's going to be dysfunctional, something needs to be done. Hey, man, let's, let us together plant a couple of. Trillion trees or trillions, you know, billions, why not? Um, um, just do it. Um, so I think the power that we can generate to connect together uh, is fabulous. And um, it, it doesn't cost a fortune either to do it. So, so, so Matai, Matai, can I, can I say that you, you are actually saying, yes, get, get people involved as shareholders, we do it on the blockchain, and get, the, get this whole thing running also on the blockchain. And um, because, well, actually, I know that we have discussed it before, and we said, yeah, for the operation, we want to choose a blockchain which is designed for it and who has a very strong management and has a, a, a big uh, footprint in the countries where we need it. Now, then we said a seller, because that's just the most advanced uh, in the market right now. And with the SPO, I mean, yeah, I, that, that would be really be awesome, awesome to get, get at least a lot of people there and at least get a lot of people, shareholders involved, whether or not they will get uh, dividends later on or whatever. But like rule set, an emotional dividend is also very important just so because... Good, you know? huh? so good, you know? That's so nice doing good. I haven't heard that yeah, much. Much. Mm -hmm. Try to do that right now. It's impossible. I mean, who owns the Red Cross? Who owns an NGO? Nobody knows that. I mean, they are just there. They have a board of directors. And board of directors, but, but um, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, and there are so many. And uh, a lot of NGOs do good, but they can never afford this type of system. So we really want to write it. Why not? That's this micro project idea. It's not about. Just provide this and, and learn of this in the next few years, how, how this can work. Uh, yeah, and if you have a sector that is, that is not really efficient, like the charity sector, I don't think it's very difficult to, to make real impact, relatively easy. Yeah, how it's going to be big, you know, if you can achieve that. But, um, uh, I think we're already approaching one, uh, one hour. Uh, of our panel, but uh, I so I think I would love to sum it up. So basically, we have on the one side uh, large organizations that have access to much larger pool of capital from high net worth individuals, from institutions, and then we have uh, just regular uh, people who want to invest small checks, maybe do sm initiate smaller projects themselves. So for both of these groups, how we can start implementing blockchain? What would be the first steps uh, to go with it? I, I think, I think there is, it's very easy. We need a good example. I mean, if you can, if you can show them in a showcase, the problem is you cannot show it by, by just saying you sell. I mean, that, that doesn't work. You need to have a platform with real people having a real wallet, spending it, and not just 10 people, 20 people, no, 5,000 people doing that work. I mean, if, if, what, if my time uh, is able to get uh, 5,000 people in Africa on his payroll planting trees, day by day, paying them a salary, day by day, with an organization which normally you can find in a, 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 you know, the amount of people that you find in a local supermarket, 
That's, that's it. it. That's, that's so impressive, impressive that, that people will know and people, people will start asking how did you do that? that? I mean, that, that at the end of the day, with blockchain, you need examples. In this case, you need a perfect example, not the blah blah, the PowerPoints and whatever things. We need real, on the ground, hands on, let's go for it. That's my opinion. And Martijn, what would you add to this? I think it's said already a lot, but uh, that, that I think it's also very exciting now in the, in the times to come. I mean, I, 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 I know that some organizations of the UN, everyone is trying to think different aspects of, of, of using blockchain and then um, for digital identity, land rights, you know, that there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of things going on. Um, and I truly hope, as, as, uh, as uh, Herman said, my sector is flooded with pilots, thousands and thousands of pilots, always using government money to try something and then it stops, even if it's successful, because it's the end of the program. I hope actually work, when it really does have to be asked, some big disruptors, not for the sake of being large, you know, but basically to set the benchmark, to make donors say, and that's how you're going to do it to the other of their implementing partners. Because everything, everyone needs to change, you know, and, and that's possible, and it's a mindset, and I think it will come very soon, and I, if I can contribute, you know, I'm pretty grumpy at the moment, after 28 years in the same way, and excited at the same moment that there's new, new momentum, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite, because, because this, this is, is a very complicated, complicated world, world, and I, I think, think one major mindset change is required, yeah. yeah. Today, we say we do good, we call a charity, we donate money, and they sort it out for us, right? That's sort of the habit that we've grown into. I think we need to start to accept that charity is not necessarily good, but that you rather have a commercial enterprise that makes money out of doing good, that delivers more results to the end state, right? So, uh, there are organizations with a B Corp, uh, uh, you know, signature or uh, how do you say certification, right? So they really live up to the standards of dealing right with people, staff, etc., etc. And these are commercial enterprises making money. So why wouldn't a commercial enterprise actually enter this space and start planting trees? Now I know that there's VCs around that are actively investing in the charity space to set up businesses that will make money but do more good than the traditional way of charity that we have seen so far. And, uh, you know, as Martijn said, going back to the very beginning, if you put a dollar in and 20 cents comes out, and you don't know where the 80 cents is, there's a lot to improve. And uh, if, a, if a business would just improve that with 20 cents or 40 cents or even 10 cents, I think it's worthwhile uh, to, make to make these things, things and support these initiatives and, and really drive that industry into, uh, you know, innovation. Right, yeah, I think uh, this is it for today. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. And today with us, we have Peter Bissia, Real Wolfert, and Martin Hackman. We uh, invite everybody who has been watching us today to continue the discussion in the comments uh, in the video because the video will still be available there. And if you have any questions to speakers, also feel free to reach out and leave comments even after the broadcast has ended. Yeah, and thank you so much once again, and we'll be happy to see you again. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Thanks, Marcia. Have a lovely evening. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.